Hello my darlings, today we're doing a Genshin Impact story. I had a post on my community tab, a poll to be more uh, specific, and in that poll everybody was almost unanimously agreeing that I should do a Venti story. Uh, essentially I've come up with a concept and thought to myself, okay, on how many characters can I apply it? Well, in the poll that you can still check out on my community tab, you can see which characters the story would have fit. Or at least the concept of the story. So, I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed writing it, because I started writing this at 4 in the morning, and I went to bed at 7 in the morning. So, I had the entire story just suddenly, in the middle of the night, plop into my head and just had to write it down. Still, I hope all of you enjoy this. And please remember to watch the video until the end, like or dislike, and comment something down below. This way you support me with the YouTube algorithm. Lastly, if you're new here and think I'm worth it, please hit the bell icon if you consider subscribing, because uh, YouTube is kind of finicky with that. Uh, for example, I am a follower of a YouTuber, and I thought he just one day stopped uploading. Then I checked. He never stopped uploading. Because I forgot to hit the bell icon, I was not notified of his videos. So, please, please remember doing that. Um, if you want to further support me, please share the video around. And uh, if you want, you can take a short clip of this video and post it on TikTok. Just remember to link to me. Uh, fan art also helps. I'm okay with Rule 34 fan art. So, you can draw whatever you want. I will respect you regardless. And if you want me to immediately react to your fan art, my Discord is linked down below. Now, please, enjoy the show. Lord Barbados stood within the hall of his cathedral. While the God of Freedom wished everyone to do as they please, as long as they didn't hurt anyone. People threw themselves under him, demanding to be ordered around. He could tell where this was going, and he felt like his own sanity was slipping. He desperately wanted to avoid the fate of his predecessor. But human ignorance was a battle he didn't think he would have to fight. He looked towards one of the nuns and simply asked, What's the time, sister? The woman, not expecting to be talked to, squeaked before announcing the time with a blush and an apology. Barbados thought for a moment. Had he forgotten something? He blinked. Oh yes, he had commissioned someone to craft him a new instrument. Well, they offered it to him. He snapped his fingers, and with a smile, he simply asked, Is anyone familiar with the Luthier? If so, would anyone mind escorting me to him? It was a strange sight, indeed. A god walking behind a very embarrassed commoner, who just happened to be there at the right time. The excursion luckily was short, and the animal Archon entered the humble house and workshop, with a smile of anticipation. The old man who owned the place had wished to give him a tribute, but not in the form of gold, rather in the form of song. Something Barbados had wished others in Mondstadt would do. The room was quite dark, unexpectedly. Only two small windows let the beautiful evening sun inside. A few candles were lit, and in the middle of the room stood a wooden table and a chair. The walls were covered with neatly propped up and decorated music instruments. And the entire room smelled pleasantly like pine resin. As soon as the angelic form of Barbados entered the small music store, the old man stumbled off of his chair. Uh, my lord! He croaked before awkwardly shuffling on his feet. I am honored. 
I was about to bring the instrument to the cathedral. Barbados smiled and simply held out a hand. It is fine, old timer. What wonderful, sweet tool of music have you made me? The old man bowed once again before quietly tiptoeing to the wall opposite of the god. A lyre, my most beautiful creation, a tool worthy of a god. Barbados came closer, his godly radiance illuminating the room in a golden light. The old man offered the lyre. It truly is... It truly is beautiful, very fine craftsmanship, said Barbados, before shaking his head. I, I cannot accept this without repaying you. The old man's body twitched in reverence. My lord, I, I do not wish to be paid, but... He shook his head almost desperately. My family, it is cursed. The god swiped a single strand of hair out of his face. Our bodies, my entire family, we are frail. A single punch by a drunkard can lead to broken bones. The man slowly got on his knees into a praying position. If it's not too much to ask, my lord, bless my kind, bless my family, take this curse away from us. Gently Barbados touched the man's forehead with a single finger. I promise that I will bless and protect your family in exchange for this beautiful lyre. May its eternal beauty and song be a representation of my gratitude. Hey, shouted a voice. Barn. Really annoying. Wake up, Barn. It's morning. Venti groaned. His head hurt. Lazily he opened his eyes and raised his head. He was lying on a table covered in wine stains inside the angel's chair. An angry deer look standing next to him. Oh, hey, humble tavern owner. <laughs> okay, m maybe he was still a bit tipsy. A wonderful night this was. He laughed. Out. Just a few moments later, the bard found himself outside the tavern, now with a heavily pounding bump on his head. When Dilok was angry, he showed it through violence. Then he sighed and began to slowly walk through the early morning streets. But his mind wasn't filled with ideas for new poems and songs. It was entirely occupied with the dream he just had. Venti rarely thought back. Venti rarely thought of back then, only occasionally remembering bits and pieces whenever it was convenient. But sadly, this memory had been a dream. But sadly, this memory hadn't been a dream. But sadly, this memory was in the form of a dream, and already he was forgetting details. He could tell this was more than just a mere dream, simply by the feeling of dread and embarrassment he felt. He wondered, did the old man's bloodline still remain in Tevat? If not, that would just be another failing on his part. He had promised to protect the man's family, after all. Without him, he could not have calmed down the Valen. Maybe he would have been forced to slaughter the dragon when the Abyss Order took hold of him. He 
holy liar. The only thing he could think of now was to mend the situation, to at least try and feel less bad. Yes, try. With a heavily pounding heart, he marched towards the headquarters of the Knights of Avonius. He needed to ask the only person in Mondstadt who knew pretty much everyone. Master Jean? He entered the office of the acting Grandmaster without knocking. The blonde woman sighed. What is it? She snapped. And then he chuckled. Nothing much. I just need to ask you something. You had awoken with a mild headache. As per usual, with heavy lidded eyes you looked outside the stained glass window. As per usual, you looked towards... As per usual, with heavy lidded eyes, you looked towards the stained glass window that tinted your small room with the colors of the rainbow. Then you looked to your right. There stood your wheelchair. Normally, Sister Rosaria would assist you in getting on it. But today it seemed that she was busy. With a pained grimace you crawled out of bed and onto your prosthetic throne. You were crippled. Your feet were malformed, making walking on them torture. Not to mention your stiff knees. You had been in the care of the nunnery for most of your life. And if it hadn't been for Sister Rosaria insisting you get a voice in the matter, they would probably have forced you to become a nun. They already forced me into this. I won't let someone else suffer the same fate, had the woman scoffed. Slowly you left the room, pushing yourself through the almost empty halls of the cathedral. You weren't hungry, yet. Besides, breakfast was most likely already over, so you simply moved into the Cecilia Garden of the Holy Ground. While the nuns felt the closest to the gods stuck in a kneeling position inside of a cold stone building, you felt that Lord Barbados's You felt that Lord Barbados's presence were appreciated much better outside where the wind could brush over one skin. You closed your eyes as a mild breeze picked up and you spread out your arms, imagining how it would be like to leave your chair behind and float through the air. You were so sunken into your daydreaming that you almost didn't notice the approaching footsteps. They were light and hard to hear like the flurry of air around you. Curious, you turned your head. A boy, seemingly your age, with a gentle smile across his face, was coming closer to you. By his attire, you judged that he was a bard. And by the way he walked, you could tell he was headed straight towards you. Hey there, he said before asking your name. With a confused blush, you told him. And may I know yours now, too? He chuckled. <laughs> I'm Venti the Bard. He made a dramatic heel turn. <laughs> I've been looking all over the place for you. If you could walk, you would now take an embarrassed step backwards. Uh, why? You asked. You weren't anyone special. Up until now, Venti didn't realize how long 2,000 years for you mortals were. And he quickly came up with an excuse. I have heard of your condition, he said quickly. And I felt sorry for you, so I wanted to see you myself and see if there's anything I can do for you. You blushed. Huh? How did you know about me? He shrugged. The obvious answer was Master Jean. 
and acting grandmaster reluctantly told him about you after he explained the situation to her. Uh, Barbara told me. That was a lie. Oh, well, she can be a little blabbermouth when she doesn't get her beauty nap. Ventisar jumped. Perfect lie. The perfect gamble. He blinked as he realized adding a gambling addiction to his list of problems would lead to something far worse than waking up with a hangover in Diluc's tavern. Um... You made an embarrassed noise. You almost never talk to boys. So, uh... What now? You said helplessly. Not... Just that you rarely talk to boys, you also rarely got visitors, and the nuns mostly kept to themselves. At first, Venti wanted to simply heal you out of your ailment and consider the ancient promise fulfilled. But then he remembered, without his gnosis, the best he could do was make you ignore the pain for a short while, which wasn't really healing you. From what I've heard, you never really saw Mondstadt. I want to change that, if you let me. You sheepishly scratched your neck. Um, okay. You smiled. Happy that someone showed you kindness. From there on, you spent the entire day with the bard. He pushed you in your wheelchair at a slow but pleasant speed and showed you all the neat places inside of the city you called home. He was charming, courteous even. And he also called you my lady once or twice. Maybe it was your loneliness, or the fact that most of your life you had spent with stuck-up women well, with the exception of Rosaria, of course. But you quickly developed an attachment to the bard. When the sun had already begun to set, you were almost disappointed that this wonderful day was about to end. But not just yet. Venti had one more thing he wanted to show you. It's something he wanted to get off his chest. Slowly he pushed you in your wheelchair over a dirt path that led to the Tree of Windrise, his favorite spot at Mondstadt. Is it okay if we rest on the grass a little? He asked with a soft smile. Sure, he answered energetically. Gently his arms moved under you, and you squeaked in surprise. But he just quietly set you down on the grass next to him. Was that a little bolt of me? He asked. Uh, oh? You replied, a flustered writ. You replied, a flustered red dusting your cheeks. Before you two lay down and gazed at the clouds. I like you, he said after a while. Huh? I... I said I like you. He shifted his head to look at you. Despite your disability, you're happy and positive, even though you don't like to show it. <laughs> I like it when girls are shy. You blushed hard. Was it really possible for someone to fall in love with a person even if they just met? He rolled on his stomach, putting both hands on his chin. I want to spend more time with you. I... I mean... You stuttered. We... We are still spending time. He made a relaxed noise. Exactly. I'd like to repeat that tomorrow. I if you don't mind, that is. You blinked. I, I don't mind it, actually. He placed with a <laughs> You played with a strand of your hair. 
I... I like you. Who? You whispered. He blinked. Some time ago, people were telling him the grandest of compliments. The people loved him, or so they said. But hearing you say, I like you, with such adorable sincerity. You had made him blush. He looked away. Sorry, you said. Did, did I make this awkward? You were genuinely afraid he would now call this off, and you'd return to the cathedral. But Venti quickly shook his head. No, no, he said. Just thinking. You know, I feel the same. I feel... I feel like, like I belong to you. For a moment he thought about the old man. <laughs> Would he be okay with this? But then again, without his gnosis he was mortal now, wasn't he? And without his gnosis, he was a different person. He crawled closer to you. How much do you like me? He said softly. You inhaled sharply upon noticing just how close he was now. A lot? You squeaked. His face now hovered above yours. And you could feel his hot breath shower over your face. His emerald eyes pierced through your skull. Your lips opened a little, as shallow breaths escaped you. Your little heart beating faster now. After a long minute of you staring longingly into each other's eyes, Venti closed the distance. His half-open mouth at yours, and immediately both of your tongues intertwined, like two snakes mating. His tongue was unnaturally long, wrapping itself tightly around yours. You groaned as pleasure filled your mind. His spit tasted like sweet wine and apples. You couldn't get enough of it. You raised your arms and took hold of his head, pushing him further into your face. Lute kissing noises reached your ears, and you let out a desperate moan. Your body felt hot and bothered, and sweat began to run down your forehead. If this was a dream, you'd never want to awaken. A cold wind suddenly picked up, and you shivered. Quickly you moved your hands to his sides before pressing his body closer to yours so you could share both your body's heat. But suddenly his hips began to awkwardly thrust into nothing. When he realized he had started humming the air, he separated from your mouth for a moment. Uh, Sorry, I, I, I lost control over my... Ignoring his apology, you quickly reached for his neck, pushing his face back onto yours. 